My fellow Saints fans, I truly believe the Saints are cursed. Or if they're not cursed, one of you put a voodoo type shit on the Saints because what the hell? There is simply just no way this team is just unlucky. There, There is something going on right here. So which one of you put a voodoo curse type shit on this team? Because I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Please uplift it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and if you've been hiding and living under a rock the last four years, let, let me catch you up to date. Over the last four seasons, the Saints have been one of the most injured teams in the NFL, dating back to about 2020. You can even argue in 2019 a little bit. But really, since 2020, the Saints have had one of the most banged up rosters and teams in the NFL. 2021, a disaster of a season, ruined by injuries and it was historically one of the most injured teams in nfl history 2022 not as bad as 21 but still quite a bit of injuries that the team had to deal with 2023 wasn't terrible it was okay and then once they hit week 10 then the whole team was injured and now it's even worse than it has been ever before and of course yes injuries happen it's a contact sport people and players are going to get injured but for the saints this is a reoccurring theme every single season and that's when it starts to become a real issue and that's when you start to wonder what is the saints medical staff their medical team and their trainers doing and what are they not doing to prevent this from happening big news to share with you guys today i'm excited to be partnering up with autograph a company co-founded by nfl legend tom brady Autograph is the best place to find the latest coverage of your favorite team, whether it's the NFL or NBA or MLB. Autograph has it all. They have articles, blogs, podcasts, literally everything that you could ever need as a fan on their app. On top of that, they reward you for viewing content of your favorite team, stuff that you're already going to do. For example, me, I can listen to a Saints podcast anywhere, YouTube. Google, Spotify, Apple, literally anywhere. But if you listen or watch the podcast on Autograph, you get coins. And in the app, you can use those coins to redeem rewards, such as free, no fee tickets, memorabilia, and merchandise, and one of a kind experiences. I'll also be uploading my content up there as well, so you can also watch my videos up there and get rewarded for doing so. All you have to do is download the Autograph app which is free by the way, and use my referral code CASH, or you can just click my referral link down in the description. Again, use my referral code CASH, it'll help me and the channel out a lot. And if you wanna help support me and the channel in any other ways, you can just click my link tree down in the description. There's lots of options for you there as well. All right, thanks for tuning in. Let's get back to the video. So the Saints have been one of the most unluckiest teams when it comes to injuries and health over the last few seasons. I don't know why, and if you don't believe me, why don't we just pull up the injury report for the Saints for this past week versus the Denver Broncos. They have 17 total players on their injury report, and that's not even including the players on injured reserve. I mean, look at this list. Cesar Ruiz, Derek Carr, Lucas Patrick, Pete Warner, Rashid Shahid, Chris Olave, Taysom Hill, Peyton Turner, Alvin Kamara, Carl Granderson, Nathan Shepard, Jake T. Gray, Alante Taylor, Cedric Wilson, Tyron Matthew, Willie Gay, but means I almost ran out of breath saying all of their names. That should tell you all you need to know. And if you do the math on that, in terms of players on the injury report, and in terms of players on the roster, 32% of the players on the roster are on the current injury report for the Saints, and it's only week seven, and it's only gonna get worse moving forward. I mean, looking at the starting offense for the Saints in week one compared to the starting offense now, Chris Olave is out, Lucas Patrick is out, Eric McCoy is out, Cesar Ruiz is out, Taysom Hill is out, Rashid Shahid is out, Derek Carr is out, Alvin Kamara is playing with a hip pointer, broken ribs and a fractured hand, and then there's Adam Prentice. Then you have Tali Saifuaga, Trevor Penning, and Fossil Moreau who are not injured. I mean, this is actually insane. How does this happen four years in a row? But trust me, it only gets worse because we got some terrible news today that Rashid Shahid, the wide receiver, one of the biggest playmakers in the NFL, and one of the few good pieces on the Saints this season, he is going to have surgery on his knee in LA. He has a meniscus issue as Dennis Allen described it, and they're not sure if he's going to miss a few weeks or if he's going to miss the rest of the season. 
They don't know if it's a full repair meniscus or a partial repair meniscus surgery that they'll need to do. Very similar to JJ McCarthy's surgery that he had earlier this season. And knowing the Saints and their luck and what's going on, chances are Rashid Shaheed is going to miss the rest of the season. Now, even if he doesn't, I think it might be smart for the Saints to just let him sit out the rest of the season. Rashid Shaheed has already dealt with a torn ACL, I'm pretty sure also a torn MCL. Let him rest up. Let him get ready for next season. This season is probably not going anywhere. All of these injuries, Dennis Allen being the head coach, Mickey Loomis being the GM, and given the Saints medical and training staff, the season isn't going anywhere. So even if Rashid Shaheed is only supposed to be out, say, five weeks, might be in his best interest, in the team's best interest, long term, to let him sit out the rest of the season. That's just my personal opinion, and that's what I would do. What's the point of putting a guy back out there who's torn his ACL before, who just had surgery? Why are you rushing him to come back sooner than later just to win six games total? Save that for next season when you're starting to rebuild. And the wide receiver depth already was a huge issue coming into the season. This was something I was consistently and constantly talking about the Saints needing to do in the draft or in free agency. None of you guys, or not none of you, but a, quite a bit of you guys didn't believe me, thought the receiver room was fine, when indeed it is not. And now we're in a situation where Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid are going to be out for Thursday night's game. And Spencer Rattler, who's now in his second start in the NFL, is going to be throwing passes to Bub Means, Cedric Wilson, Mason Tipton, Equipment Manager St. Brown, and Kevin Austin Jr. That is not how you support a rookie quarterback in his second start. He's also going to have one, two starting offensive linemen. Both tackles, the interior offensive line is injured. Alvin Kamara can't run the ball. Kendra Miller's back. This is not how you support Spencer Rattler or any quarterback in any situation, let alone a guy's second start. At least Spencer Rattler has connection with these backups. That's looking on the positive side of things. But hey, at least the Saints earlier this week signed Dante Pettis to the practice squad. That does nothing. And that's a good thing the Saints have AT. No, they, they released him and he's on the Broncos. I bet the Saints are wishing they had AT Perry now. I'm not a big AT Perry dude, but given the situation right now, the Saints could have definitely used them. But when you look at these injuries in the past four seasons and what these players have been dealing with and have dealt with, this is actually insane and it's ridiculous. Now, of course, there's some things that you can't prevent, like Alvin Kamara breaking his ribs. Taysom Hill fracturing his ribs, Camara, you know, fracturing his hand. Those things you can't prevent. You can't do anything about those. That's bone on bone. But the soft tissue injuries of guys with the groin injuries, calf injuries, hamstring injuries, knee injuries, that's stuff that you can prevent. And the Saints training and medical staff simply has not done a very good job of that over the last four or five seasons. Now, this is just a reminder that a certain somebody oh michael thomas has warned us about the medical staff told us what was going on and was called a team cancer for it in 2020 he was having issues with the medical staff and stayed silent about it they told him not to get surgery so that he would play through the injury told him he wouldn't need surgery then after the year they told him he would need it basically told him a lie so that he would play through the pain for drew Brees' last season in 2022, Michael Thomas tweeted out saying that NFL medical staff and trainers are poorly trained, they're not qualified, and they are cheap, or at least in some of the places he knows, which is a jab at the Saints training and medical staff. And if anyone has had difficulties and issues, it's Michael Thomas with the Saints medical, but no one believed him. They just called him a team cancer for it. And then just this past season, Michael Thomas aired it all out in a rant about Derek Carr and Dennis Allen and the organization in general, he also said that the medical and training staff is malpractice. If you have a knee injury or a hand injury, it doesn't matter. They have you do the exact same recovery timeline stuff all over. It doesn't matter if it's a knee or a hand and it's called insanity. Basically, if you have a knee injury, you're doing the exact same recovery stretches and rehabbing as guys who have a hand injury when you should be rehabbing for that particular body part as opposed to everyone doing the exact same thing. 
I think a lot of you owe Michael Thomas an apology. He tried to warn us about the medicals and the training staff that the Saints have, and yet no one wanted to listen. They just called him a team cancer for it. And now here we are, once again, another injury-plagued season for the Saints. 17 players on the injury report. I wonder what um Michael Thomas has got to be thinking to himself. They should have listened to me. And now Michael Thomas is not the only player who's had issues with the Saints medical staff and the training staff over the years. Delvin Bro had an issue with them along with Sean Payton as they had him play through a broken leg because they diagnosed it as a basically leg contusion, which is a bruise. They told him he had a bruise when in fact he broke his fibula. Malpractice. Keenan Lewis had issues with the training and medical staff as well with his knee injury. I've had players on Instagram leave comments in my comment section saying that the medical staff is definitely not the best. They have bad apples in the group. I've also talked with some players in DMs and I have asked them about the situation and a lot of them have said similar things. And there are some other players who love comments saying that the Saints medical and training staff does what's best for the team rather than what's best for the players and their health and the individual. So this isn't just a Michael Thomas issue. This is multiple players have said this. It's just Michael Thomas was the only one who was big enough for anyone to actually listen, but no one did. This is an issue that simply isn't being taken care of. It needs to be addressed the same way how the head coach needs to be addressed and how the general manager needs to be addressed. And all of this is happening because I think the Saints are cursed. Rashid Shaheed may be out for the rest of the season. What a heartbreaking injury. He's one of the few young, talented players on this team. Hopefully he can recover quite well and just focus towards next season in the future as opposed to now. To recap though, the medical and training staff sucks. The head coach sucks. The GM and the owner sucks. And the Saints are cursed because they're stuck in purgatory with all of these things because no one wants to make any change. Let me know what you make of the medical and training staff. Are they an issue? Is this stuff that they can prevent? Or is it simply just bad luck or the Saints being cursed? Subscribe to my channel, Cash Sports, for more daily NFL content, up to date news. And if you're a Saints fan, more up-to-date painful videos. I hope you have a good one. Peace.